Good afternoon, Dr. Sagadipala. And we have a lot of people signing up. How many do we have? Right. OK, so we can start. Uh, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and welcome to Dr. Sagadipala and everyone who's joining us on the webinar portal as well as at Facebook Live. Um, today, we are going to talk about SDGs and then how localized indicators are being developed. Our speaker uh, for the day is uh, Dr. Tusita Sugadapala, who is a senior consultant at Slycan Trust, and he's um, a very well-known academic who works with the Motiwa University, um, a senior lecturer there, and used to be the former chairman of the Sustainable Energy Authority as well. I think you can give an introduction to yourself. Yes. not chairman. Okay, so I'll let you take over, and the dogs are making noise, so I'm going to go mute, sorry. So you are going to upload the presentation, right? Yeah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as uh, Yoshita highlighted, so I am Tuchita Tsukadapala. A senior consultant to SlyCan uh, Trust and also uh, a member for, of uh, Institute Morotua. Uh, today, uh, our webinar is on uh, sustainable development goals and also looking at how to localize uh, indicators, the, the targets and indicators, uh, especially looking at the, uh, the process for inclusive, participatory, and country specific uh, stage implementation. So, it will be around uh, 30 minutes for presentation, then it will be followed by uh, the uh, question and answer time. Uh, the outline of my uh, talk today, uh, there are four or other six areas. I will highlight the objective of this uh, particular webinar, uh, basically what uh, we expect uh, once we cover this webinar. Then a uh, quick background of the uh, 2030 agenda, uh, and then also the understanding SDGs. I think we all aware of SDGs, but then I just want to highlight some of the uh, underlying principles of SDGs so, so that the follow-up uh, topics on localization uh, can be better understand. So then uh, we enter into the main uh, topic today, the localization of SDGs. Uh, I will uh, discuss this topic under three areas, the need, why we need uh, localization, uh, and then uh, what are the challenges uh, for the localization and also looking at the opportunities. So, and then uh, I will, uh, discuss a few examples uh, to have a better understanding. Uh, the objectives uh, of the present, uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, webinar uh, include first, uh, once we follow this webinar, it's expected that the participant will understand better the 2030 agenda and uh, the features of SDGs. And also, uh, we'll have better respect on the core principles of SDGs, uh, uh, which is very important because uh, sometimes uh, uh, the uh, when you look at the uh, the uh, present uh, uh, SDG documents and maybe even the policies and so on, uh, sometimes we feel that some of the areas are not really uh, touched upon. Uh, maybe some of the wordings are not there. Uh, but when you understand the core principles of SDGs, we'll find that uh, any activity we think about can be easily uh, integrated to SDGs, and also uh, it's important to integrate to SDGs. So therefore, understanding the core principles uh, become uh, central to this type of uh, uh, you know training program. Then uh, we go into a bit more uh, kind of in-depth uh, aspects, uh, the competencies, the substantiate the interdependencies of SDGs, which is very important uh, because uh, most of us uh, usually work in a particular specific areas, and then. Uh, try to uh, look at that one uh, uh, more in depth. Uh, meanwhile, losing the, uh, uh, the importance of uh, interdependency. So therefore, uh, it's important to understand uh, when you work in a particular area even, how far those areas are linked to the other SDGs. So that's where the, really the SDGs become a kind of a, uh, the, the target uh, set by the 2030 agenda can be only achieved by having this uh, understanding. Finally, uh, the today's uh, you know, topic basically the, the address the localization of SDGs uh, that uh, through this uh, webinar, 
uh, we expect that uh, you will get the competency on how to appreciate uh, address uh, the uh, localization of SDGs. Um, when you look at the uh, 2030 agenda, basically it's talk about an inclusive approach uh, to transform the world. So there are two uh, keywords here, inclusive and transform. And then uh, by uh, addressing multiple development challenges. So, uh, so that's the basis basically, uh, which uh, when you look at the, uh, the process of developing SDGs, which were different from M MDGs, Millennium Development Goals, uh, which was uh, uh, basically governed by the government intervention. But here, uh, it's an all inclusive process where many stakeholders throughout the world uh, took part of this exercise uh, for several years. And then final result is this. Uh, uh, 2030 agenda and uh, subsequent uh, this goals. So we have 17 goals, 169 uh, targets, and 230 plus around 230, 40 plus, uh, around that uh, indicators to be achieved within five year period, which is commencing from 1st January 2016. Mean that we have already gone to uh, uh, covered uh, four years, so we are now going into fifth year. Um, now, when you look at the local context, uh, with this development, of course, uh, Sri Lanka uh, signed the agreement. So it became a signature to the 2030 agenda with uh, uh, other countries. Uh, and uh, based on that, uh, the government of Sri Lanka enacted a, a particular act called Sustained Development Act in 2017, which provides the policy, regulatory, and institutional framework for the implementation of SDGs. Through which the Sustainable Development Council has been established, which is now in operation. Presently, which uh, Sustainable Council uh, work under the Presidential Secretariat. Uh, the, uh, in the last uh, government region, it was under uh, uh, Minister of Environment, because the president, uh, the president is, uh, himself is the Minister of the Environment. But now it's under the Presidential Secretariat. So basically, it's a very powerful body. Uh, which basically is responsible of uh, uh, making policies, regulatory intervention, and also institutional set up the instrument framework. So presently, uh, the, one of the activity, uh, important activity uh, conducted by this uh, uh, Sustainable Council is the development of a national policy and strategy on sustainable development of Sri Lanka, which is in progress now. A kind of a draft has been prepared, but uh, another round of uh, uh, consultation to be done. So this I will discuss uh, a bit uh, in detail later on. Uh, so basically, we are looking at mainstreaming SDGs into all the level of institutions, uh, like uh, the levels of governance, national, provincial, and local authority levels, and uh, especially looking at uh, localization of SDGs. That's very important element in this whole process. So basically, uh, to have a better understanding of the SDGs, we also look at what happened earlier because SDGs were, in a way, developed through the experience of MDGs. So, uh, but only thing is, uh, sometimes uh, we think that uh, SDGs second phase of MDG. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, SDGs are very uh, uh, novel uh, uh, or a different way of approaching the problem. So, therefore. The scope of uh, 20 day agenda uh, go far beyond MDGs. So therefore, it's a new way of uh, looking at the problem and solving the problem. So therefore, uh, SDG is not uh, second phase of MDG, although it's uh, happened consequently. Uh, so uh, when you look at the uh, main differences, uh, we see the, the how far the SDGs are superior in terms of MDGs. Uh, this compares some of the key elements. Uh, I don't want to go into detail there, but this highlight how far uh, the SDGs are uh, uh, balanced or the uh, the covers the whole uh, topic. Uh, the comprehensiveness is uh, highlighted through this slide. So we are looking at these uh, different approaches, uh, number of goals, and then uh, the challenges, the involvement of stakeholders, then uh, the indicators. So all, all are, uh, we have a higher kind of weightage in SDGs. But only common thing is basically uh, all uh, MDGs and SDGs are uh, Clear had a clear, concise, time-bound, and measurable uh, uh, targets and indicators were there. So that's the common thing. But then there are many differences. Now, understanding is this is also uh, important to highlight this what you call core principles. Uh, these are not really written as such. I mean, look at the, uh, the documents, but then we can extract those. 
Uh, there are many others also. I will highlight a few which are a bit important for our discussion today. So one of the core co uh, principles is the universality or universal, uh, which uh, basically uh, highlight that uh, all European and developed countries uh, are subject to this uh, uh, this uh, uh, interventions, and also not only uh, different countries but within the society, within the country itself. In Sri Lanka, for example, this should be applicable for national, provincial, and local level too. So this universal thing will go into that level too. So that will highlight the importance of this. Uh, the local, uh, what do you call this, uh, local governments and uh, they are involvement in the SDGs. Leaving no one behind, of course, is another important aspect. Interconnected and indivisibility is a very important element, uh, which uh, I highlight uh, later on also. Uh, that uh, when you look at uh, any uh, aspect of SDGs, any particular area, any sector, we should not forget how those, uh, this particular sector or area are linked or is linked to other areas because this uh, interconnectedness and uh, indivisibility is a very important aspect. Inclusive, basically, everyone is there, uh, every sectors are there. So that uh, this indicates that any activity we do, any sector we are talking about, any people, any area, all are uh, included in this exercise. Then, of course, multi stakeholder partnership is uh, highlighted. That's one of the new areas uh, when compared with, with uh, MDG. This partnership uh, become very important aspect. Uh, they talk about partnership between uh, different levels of governance, different institutions, different uh, uh, stakeholder groups, as well as different countries. So this is a very broader uh, uh, topic. So with that, uh, uh, we can also look at this. Uh, now, although uh, uh, SDGs are interconnected, as we discussed earlier, there are ways of uh, clustering them to have better understanding. So this one way of doing it, what called five P's, which is uh, already highlighted at the at the time of uh, defining SDGs two. So this uh, planet, people, and prosperity is the known three thing, which was basically even in the uh, business world uh, planners basically indicate the uh, the uh, environment, people, basically society and prosperity basically economy so that's there so that we can see several uh, uh, sdgs are clustered in these three uh, areas but the important aspect there what the novelty here is we are bringing it here the peace and the partnership so that's is a, a reinforcement of this uh, typical sustainability uh, dimension uh, uh, economy environment and society here is uh, reinforced through what you call partnership and peace so that's become very important elements uh, in the uh, new agenda. Here again, I want to uh, trust on the, uh, the the property that although we group it in a five piece here, all these five pieces are interconnected so that all the SDGs are interconnected. So that's we should not uh, uh, undermine that feature. Another way of doing it, there are many debates. I just put up one more thing. Uh, we call wedding cake, uh, which indicate the way uh, you can cluster the uh, 17 SDGs such that you can uh, show uh, hierarchical uh, levels which indicate that economy and society are inherently embedded into biosphere. So that concept is very important uh, that uh, today's context, uh, the, the importance of the environment and biosphere uh, become the prime. Uh, and uh, while we are talking about economic and social uh, development. So there are different ways of uh, uh, you know analyzing uh, SDGs, and, uh, and and we can go into more detail, like going for mapping of uh, uh, the goal, 17 goals, 116 targets, and indicators, and in a single picture that become very uh, complex. But that type of uh, analysis are very important when you want to understand a particular area, how it uh, integrate to SDGs. Uh, then we have to map a particular area or particular maybe goal or maybe a target or maybe any particular area. Uh, within uh, sustainable development goals 17 and then 169 targets and all the indicators that type of mapping also very important and there are different tools uh, ratio of tools are available now uh, for us to map uh, different uh, you know areas within SDGs now uh, now we are going into the localization aspect of SDGs basically it's, it's, it's a very fundamental element within SDGs which uh, indicated uh, in several areas within the uh, SDGs uh, when you had, uh, you know uh, 2030 agenda so uh, one of the key elements is although the uh, 
twin threat agencies of course global uh, intervention the primary responsible for implementing sdgs lies with the national government not only national of course it go into the provincial and uh, local governments too so therefore uh, ownership lies with them so therefore uh, the global agenda the maybe uh, the, uh, the the goals the targets and indicators all are written uh, in a way to suit all the countries but now when you want to use the uh, like uh, implement the agenda 2030 it's a must that we had to you know look into the local countries we call localization uh, there so meaning that mainstream of stages at all governance levels uh, here uh, national local I mean uh, provincial and uh, uh, local authorities level and involvement of all the stakeholders and fields uh, the different areas, different sectors, fields, all has to be uh, considered in the national uh, context. We call this national local realities and priorities or circumstances has to be taken into account when we are implementing uh, Agenda 2020, uh, 2030, basically, mean that uh, we have to uh, look at SDGs and then adopt uh, uh, the SDG 70 SDGs as well as, more importantly, the targets and indicators uh, to suit our uh, national and local uh, in uh, the requirement so in particular this uh, another aspect there is now when you look at this whole uh, sdg 17 the way it's uh, interlinked it's of course a, a complex uh, issue because we have complex development challenges uh, to be uh, tackled with and which involve uh, collaboration and sustained effort of all the governance national provincial and local levels as well as uh, involvement of various stakeholders, uh, including Swiss so societies as well as private sector. So, therefore, uh, in that context, the localized the goals, targets, and indicators is a, is a must. In addition, it's not just uh, localizing the, 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 the these goals, targets, and indicators, but also looking at the means of implementation, how this uh, the localized one can be implemented, uh, and also looking at uh, the follow up, how uh, once we implement it. Uh, the measure, uh, to measure the progress, monitor, and then report. So all these uh, are uh, the responsibility lie with not only the local, the, the central government, but also local government. For example, probably we are aware that the central government we have what we call voluntary national review. Uh, the first uh, of this one is uh, submitted a uh, couple of years back, which is prepared by the national government. But at the same time, we should have the uh, the voluntary local review by uh, local governments and other local stakeholders so and based on which only uh, the national uh, the uh, the review should be prepared uh, so therefore that link is still missing i think uh, there are certain level of linkages but uh, we have to give more priority on that i mean that this localization will go into not only setting the targets or indicators but also implementing as well as the reporting monitor uh, and reporting back all uh, are linked to the, uh, the, the the localization so it's a very broader topic to be understand the challenges uh, there are many of course because of the complexity uh, i have grouped this one uh, in line with some uh, global you know the the exercises uh, this uh, are highlighted in many uh, uh, global uh, reportings one is basically the lack of enabling policies and institutional environment, uh, basically which, uh, which related to the uh, lack of policy coherence. Uh, because we have different policies uh, which are not aligned to each other. We have different stakeholders, uh, institutions uh, with uh, overlapping subject areas uh, and so on. And their coordination are very weak. So that's one of the major challenges. So for example, if you want to set a particular target in a particular area, let's say livestock industry. When you look at that particular target, there may be many, uh, several institutions involved in that one, because when you look at the SDG framework, there are many ways uh, these uh, particular element are linked to others. It can be energy, it can be uh, uh, the uh, economic uh, area, whatever. So that means uh, when you take the decision, uh, we have to follow those institutions uh, who are having the ownership of the subject area, and we, we might find that uh, they have different policies which are in contradiction. So in such situation, how to come up with a, a, a true indicator uh, become a challenge because uh, we have a, a policy gap. So what do you call this uh, coherence issue? 
same thing uh, with the coordination so therefore this is one of the major challenge of uh, uh, localizing sdgs then of course uh, the limited opportunities to stakeholder engagement that's one of the key uh, issue again so presently uh, most of these i think sdgs are uh, generated or came up through national uh, uh, policies and then of course uh, uh, the uh, targets uh, some action plans and so on for example in energy sector one of the leading document which uh, drive the sdg is the uh, the uh, long term generation plan of silon uh, uh, city board uh, but the you no know, cb is looking at only energy sector only electricity side but then energy is much more broader Uh, that some of the other areas, like for example, SMEs, uh, energy, uh, uh, energy aspect of SMEs, small and medium industries uh, may have forgotten. So therefore, uh, that will uh, have a great impact on the the true, true concept or the principles of SDGs. So therefore, this uh, only way we can, you know, correct this one is having the correct stakeholder engagement. Uh, that has to happen. I think it's happening in a way, but. Uh, i don't think is the way we expect so that's one of the area again challenging area we have to somehow address this issue then the knowledge ecosystem that's one of the major barrier in most of the activities in sri lanka or rather setting of even targets we don't have data sometimes we have data in different places is these are not concise uh, like put it together sometimes we have data but we have never analyzed the data I mean that uh, once you analyze the data we get information the knowledge can be created only through information not data data is raw we have to cook the data then it become information now we don't have information sometimes we have data but information so that data itself will not generate the knowledge or the ecosystem we require so so therefore this one of the again area we have to look at it we need especially more uh, reliable this aggregated data uh, at national and local levels that's large missing at present Uh, then uh, another area is the financing now remember that sdgs are voluntary and it's expected that most of the uh, the uh, sustainable development actions activities has to be uh, uh, deal with the local funding local resources uh, so in that context uh, the mobilization of the resources the public resources as well as the private investment is very important it's also not happening at at present and most of the cases the public resources are basically meaning that uh, the resources available with uh, ministries and their agencies and the way they allocate the funding to their development activities how far it's aligned with sdgs are still questionable so therefore uh, this uh, lack of emphasis on financing on, on sdgs is really affecting the implementation the successful implementation of sdgs and finally uh, the innovation ecosystem Uh, culturally and individually also sri lanka is rated as uh, well, weak in this innovation thing uh, so therefore uh, as a society as individuals we are not good innovators that will hamper sdgs because sdgs or the uh, the uh, 2030 the, uh, the agenda talk about transformational change the transformational change cannot happen without innovation so innovation doesn't mean just a uh, innovating uh, uh, machine or product we are talking about innovation in processes uh, you know regulation policies all so this innovation ecosystem is weak in sri lanka that also has to be addressed we have to have ways of means uh, ways and means of nurturing uh, this uh, innovations so so those are some of the uh, key areas which uh, really affect the localization of sdgs then uh, of course when you have challenges uh, we'll have also opportunities uh, we should not forget that all these challenges uh, can uh, address if we look at the uh, sdgs and the process and also agenda 2030 agenda more carefully one of the element there is basically the interconnectedness of sdgs of course uh, is become more complex in one hand but also it provide ideal opportunity to tackle multidimensional multidimensional and cross cutting issues and challenges through use of common indicators frameworks methodologies and system thereby we can prevent uh, uh, the copying or what you call this uh, duplication and of course we, we can share the resources 
So therefore, this complexity uh, within SDGs, having interconnectedness, also give a, a great opportunity for us to make it more or rather simpler by having this common indicators and uh, the frameworks and so on. And also, we can share the resources. That has to happen. Otherwise, the implementation of SDGs will become very, very complex. So therefore, this is a very important aspect. So this is a, one of the underlying principles for localization. You know, doing localization, we have to look at this aspect. And further, most of the underlying uh, development challenges covered in SDGs, like poverty, even uh, climate change, energy, clean energy, all have been deliberated more over decades. So it's not new issues. Of course, uh, SDGs put the thing in a new context, but the issues have been addressed or rather have been analyzed earlier. And, 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 and therefore, there are a lot of resources available there are now for us to use for the implementation of SDGs. Basically, looking at how to harmonize other you know, agendas or, or the, uh, the policies or frameworks with SDGs. So for example, uh, there are national and local policies and institutional framework already established to cater for certain areas, maybe health sector, energy sector, we have institutions, even the climate change, we have climate secretary, climate change secretariat in the Ministry of Environment. There is staff there, they are working on that, they have funding. So established systems can be used effectively uh, to implement SDGs. Secondly, of course, we have these international treaties and conventions, which also can be used effectively. And these uh, are in effect now. And not only the uh, Agenda 2030, all these other treaties and conventions are also in effect, so that we can think about how to harmonize those because SDGs cover everything. So therefore, all these conventions and treaties are one over the other are linked to SDGs. So therefore, uh, in localization, we had to look at all these other convention treaties and also uh, the existing policies and other institutional framework for us to implement SDGs. One of the example, uh, probably uh, everyone could understand this one is NDCs and SDGs. Now, uh, NDCs has been deliberated for years and years now, decades, uh, through uh, UNFCCC, TCCC, and then of course now, presently we have this uh, the commitments uh, through national determined contributions. Earlier we had NAMAS and then also uh, CDM and so on. So those are deliberated in detail, and and already uh, the policies and actions are available. Uh, so therefore, uh, there's opportunity for us to, for example, look at SDG 13, which talk about the same theme, and then. Uh, try to uh, indicate these two. Uh, so, uh, but only thing is remember that NDC is mandatory. Uh, so therefore, there are a lot of funding and effort are going there. Uh, but uh, SDGs are still voluntary, but we consider it's very important. And therefore, uh, though it's voluntary, every country is, uh, countries are trying to uh, implement it. So, uh, so therefore, basically what they mean is NDCs, we have targets. And, and, and some are implemented now, are being implemented. Why don't you think about using this uh, to uh, strengthen SDGs and vice versa? So one of the challenges is basically, uh, now remember that NDCs are basically targeted for climate change reduction. So therefore, climate change, uh, one is the mitigation, other one is the adaptation. So those are basically concerned on one area, that is the climate change issue. But when you look at SDG 13, all this topic is climate action, it's, uh, these are integrated to all the other 16 uh, goals, meaning that there's a market difference in the way it appears, it should appear. Therefore, while we have opportunity for NDCs to consider to integrate into SDGs, it's not just one-to-one -one copying, because when you take one NDC and put into SDG, there will be many, many other areas we have to look into uh, and then decide on the target and indicators uh, to uh, suit the SDG 13 rather than NDC. So therefore, there's a commonality, but then of course there are differences. We have to understand that. And uh, now uh, in Sri Lanka, both these documents are in under preparation. NDCs, uh, there's an update in going on now, and uh, they are supposed to, I think, submitted uh, by September. But now with this uh, present situation, probably they will be able to. Uh, we will be able to submit it in. October, November. So therefore, it's, it's, it's still in updating situation. So therefore, there is an opportunity for uh, changing some of the, uh, the indicators and, uh, and 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 targets. On the other hand, uh, as you uh, as I indicated earlier, the national policy and strategy of sustainable development 
which is uh, being developed now uh, is in progress. Some level of consultation has happened, but then further consultations are required. Uh, how far it's going to happen with the present context is, uh, is not very clear yet. And probably because of if this uh, uh, lockdown drag on, uh, both NDCs and SDGs, there will be some consultation uh, with the ministries and agencies by the uh, responsible agency where there will be some limits uh, for other stakeholders to get involved. I'm not saying that uh, they will, be, will finalize this one with that, but then initial stages for the uh, next uh, few weeks or coming months, uh, maybe it's more uh, towards the, uh, the existing uh, agencies, uh, uh, the ministries, maybe they also will go to the local authorities too, but then that will happen in a different way. But then uh, that will uh, hamper the uh, through uh, 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 you know, the consultation process of uh, stakeholders. So we have to see how we can uh, uh, come uh, around that. Now, uh, another uh, good example of this uh, cross-cutting theme is sustainable consumption and production, or we call responsible consumption and production. Uh, that is uh, like uh, climate action is linked to many different uh, uh, goals and targets, and uh, which is an important element. Why I had taken here is one is, is uh, interlinked with others, and secondly, both uh, the climate action, that's SDG 13 and SDG 12, has been have been identified as one of the weakest uh, areas of uh, progression in SDGs. Both climate action and SCPs are supposed to be uh, weaker in implementation for the first four years. So therefore, it, there's an urgency as well as importance of addressing these two issues. And being these two areas, SH 13 and 12, both are interlinked to the others, uh, it's become a very uh, complex task. Maybe that's why it's, there's not, not much in, uh, the, impo uh, the development too. So therefore, uh, this is important aspect, SCP, uh, and also uh, the climate action. Now, uh, this one example, uh, how the SDG 12, that is CP, is linked to other uh, the uh, goals and also the targets. Uh, this uh, the green bar shows basically CP, the the SDG 12. All the all the uh, targets are of course is in its own CP. This yellow uh, color one, the shaded one, uh, or the uh, shows the different other uh, uh, goals within that different target which are linked to SCPs directly or sometimes with some relevance. Uh, so this was uh, done with the uh, uh, exercise on development of uh, policy for sustainable consumption production for the last few years and it's now uh, gazetted, the policy is approved. So with that exercise, this uh, mapping was done and this is also now available uh, uh, in, 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 in uh, public domain. Different countries have, uh, like, they are doing this type of mapping for different areas, for climate action, or any other area. Even, even uh, when you look at the livestock sector, these type of mappings are there to see how each sector, individual sectors, can or should contribute to SDGs. So this indicates a kind of a, a simple way of seeing how uh, those uh, cross-cutting uh, themes uh, can be used uh, to uh, simplify the development of uh, uh, targets and indicators because these are common targets and indicators. So therefore, uh, we can have a, a, a synergetic approach in uh, developing uh, and localizing targets and indicators. Uh, just uh, to wind up, I just uh, indicated uh, some of the areas we had looked at it when uh, uh, setting targets and indicators. This applicable both targets and indicators with now localizing. One is we call smart indicators. So even uh, targets, smart targets. It's, it should be specific. When we talk about a particular area, we have to be very specific on that, so that uh, the, the definition is well. talking about the time frame of 2030, 
So within 2030, those targets has to be attained. It can maybe even prior to that, but uh, the, the, it should be at least by 2030. Those should be attainable. It should be relevant uh, to the the sector, uh, the area we are looking at. Uh, we should not touch upon the area which are not relevant. So therefore, we are uh, sometimes prioritizing uh, certain available indicators. Come up with uh, uh, manageable number of indicators. We can look at how far the selected indicators are relevant. It's less relevant, we can give less uh, prominence for that one. So finally, it should be time bound. As I said, uh, it should be within 2030, but we have to indicate a time at which this target or indicator uh, could be achieved. So this is what you call smart indicators. In addition, we can also use this conventional uh, framework for environmental indicators also to identify the different type of indicators for uh, SDGs or targets and indicators. Now here we are talking about responses, driving forces, pressures, state and impacts. Each of these area can be a, an indicator. Uh, sometimes we just trying to talk about indicators or target by looking at the impact only. But then uh, we lose the whole process of you know, monitoring, reporting, and then follow up process unless we not look at the interlink areas like the policies related to that one. That we can have target in the policy. Uh, the driving forces, maybe some economic activities, maybe population, the cost, whatever, there can be an uh, indicator in that line. Then the pressures, maybe uh, regulations, the, maybe emissions, waste generation can be an uh, uh, area for target and uh, indicator and so on. And so therefore, uh, when you're setting up indicator, it's not, it should not just uh, concentrate on only on impact side. There are other areas we have to look at, for example, uh, policy revision can be one of the indicators, uh, maybe local or government level, or regulation revision may be one of the indicators. That's the particular response. So, therefore, this uh, framework, which was originally developed for environmental indicators, can be uh, effectively used for uh, unfine indicators for SDGs too. Uh, this is my last slide, uh, just to uh, show uh, some of the uh, kind of a localization happen. I don't see it's a true localization yet because it's not finalized. I just uh, try and uh, use the present uh, policy document, uh, which uh, some of the, now this is the health sector. Now the comparison, I have put the global target and global indicators. The global target is by 2030, reduce the global maternity, uh, maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 births. Then there are two indicators. In the local context, our health group, uh, they have changed this one by looking at the local context, the person data was available, and they said the target more stringent. You can see here, it's less than 16 rather than 70. So that for therefore, rather than just following the global target, we had to look at really the local context where we did the data, of course. Then uh, we set the target based on uh, real uh, possible actions. So this, uh, with the, this target, there are some strategies and actions has to be uh, listed out. Now, the local indicators has not uh, derivated yet. That has to come in the future. We can just use the earlier two, like uh, 3.1.1, that's the global one, maternal uh, mortality ratio. But here, the localization also indicate that maybe if we have, a, let's say, some sectors where this mortality ratio is quite high and alarming, we can set our local target on that particular maybe uh, group uh, uh, or uh, uh, geographical area and the, and set a target for that one because it's become maybe it's that particular group or area are more vulnerable or more uh, rather in a poor situation in that sense. So, that, so we can have more than one ta uh, target. We can have an aggregative target at national level uh, or we can group into smaller ones so so therefore uh, here localization uh, in particular should look at the the local level the provincial and uh, uh, local authority level if you have discrep discrepancies of course they are usually we have to have different level of indicators and targets set by those authorities and they will monitor they will report that to the uh, the, uh, the the central government and then uh, we can look at the, how it uh, going to uh, uh, affect the or uh, contribute to the national targets. So therefore, here localization become more uh, meaningful and also more complex by looking at that angle. 
So I'm taking another one, uh, which is uh, kind of opposite thing. Uh, now here, 3.6, uh, the global challenge uh, target say that by 2020, half, the 50%, the number of global deaths, uh, injured, injuries from road traffic accident, uh, that is the number has to be half by 2030. Now this written in 20, uh, seven, 16, uh, or, or so, so therefore this improved in 2016, 2015 is written. Uh, so within those four years, the target was by today, that's by this year, to half it. Uh, now, when you look at the uh, the local target, uh, this is the new one uh, uh, changed by our health group, uh, basically uh, representing the health ministry too. They look at their targets now, person target, which are uh, cabinet approved documents and so on. So they have used that value. He said that 2030 reduced the number of deaths and injuries from road traffic accident by 20% only one fifth so uh, probably that is uh, uh, you know justifiable for the uh, central government maybe the the health ministry by looking at their angle but then as a independent person as a human being i know that in sri lanka we have 8.5 only 8 to 9 person die per day due to road accident so now here we are talking about that value to reduce to from eight to nine to seven to eight is that okay so that's the question basically so therefore so when you're deciding this indicator i think there are other sectors other stakeholders who should also give some input to improve it i'm not saying this is uh, you know very bad or unrealistic or whatever uh, but then uh, there are others maybe traffic police maybe uh, road development authority then local authorities uh, and maybe uh, you know define more traffic they can come into the picture and look at how to reduce it because this number is very alarming so therefore uh, since we are deviating much from the global target and and setting up a very light target here uh, that will be reflected badly uh, from outside to the local countries as well as i think uh, locally also we we have uh, you know uh, issues of this value so therefore uh, likewise, there are other areas where we need uh, uh, intervention for us to improve uh, by uh, giving uh, the, the inputs for uh, decision-making bodies. So that's basically uh, my uh, main presentation. I just will touch upon the concluding remark. Uh, the topic we are talking about, these challenges are common for most of the countries in the world. And so therefore, there are many success stories uh, where we can look at uh, and thereby we can improve our things so we can learn from them and uh, and 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 uh, for which we need to take their uh, the uh, the success stories but then we have to localize it uh, in an innovative way and means of uh, so innovative ways and means of addressing the challenges so to, to have effective localization of sdgs that's where only we can make the uh, the uh, 2030 agenda is uh, in effect or rather a success in Sri Lanka. Uh, thank you very much. That uh, very informative presentation. Um, I'm seeing some questions on the chat box. Um, I'm not sure which one Abhishek wanted more information on. Um, maybe we can take it up in the question and answers that will come up. So if you have questions, please type it in the chat box and we'll project it to the screen so that Dr. Sugada Palak could answer them. Which you made on 3.1. I think it's on slide 19, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you could maybe. 19. Separated, it might be easy for doctors with the father. I don't see a question yet. Hmm?
Yoshita, if there's a question there yet, or oh, it's... Speaking uh, for elaboration on 3.1, and the point you made, but I, I don't know what the last point you made on it is, so it might be difficult. Um, but there's a question now from Tilal. Maybe we'll get back to Abhishek's question afterwards. What kind of links do you find uh, revised in NDCs? Yeah. Um, now we we'll look at the. Uh, now this is the question: Is how can you link SDGs when uh, revising NDCs? So uh, now when we we'll look at the uh, the NDCs at present, we had uh, certain sectors, for example, in mitigation, uh, energy. Uh, then uh, there are five other sectors basically uh, the forestry uh, then uh, waste uh, uh, then transport and industry and so on some of the uh, ndcs are basically uh, directly taken from the uh, the uh, national uh, approved documents where it's also reflected in sdgs so uh, so so basically uh, harmonizing those are a bit easy uh, but then uh, there are certain areas of NDCs, uh, for example, industry, even the waste, uh, that uh, presently uh, uh, they are looking at different options because there has a target of reducing uh, certain uh, carbon percentage, like 10% uh, uh, with the business uh, with within the usual case. So when we are uh, listing out different NDCs, um, there should be prioritization because uh, when you look at the amount of carbon we can reduce by looking at all the interventions is beyond that uh, rather larger than our targets so when you are revising uh, we have to use indicators or what you call this uh, criteria indicators to prioritize ndcs based on the principle of sdgs so that is not just looking at the amount of carbon reduction we have to prioritize based on the other other aspects uh, so that other aspects means basically which highlight the interlinkages of climate action with other development goals. Now we did a similar exercise for NDCs in energy sector, where earlier the prioritization is only done by the what you call the uh, the cost of carbon reduction, the mitigation, the cost of mitigation, the abatement cost in uh, the uh, the US dollars per ton of carbon abated. But later on uh, we have added a new set of indicators which look at the uh, low, uh, the government priorities, uh, information availability, and so on. And then we had a different prioritization so that the list become a different list. And then the the next level of NDCs, uh, the revision, I think the new, will, uh, new list will appear because it considers the other aspect of NDCs which are linked to SDGs. So, so that's the way you probably can look at it. So all the sectors, we have that opportunities. This question is on, would it be possible to include SCP link to food consumption production to connect to NDC review? Does this represent potential for emission reduction and resilient building of committees? Of course, uh, because most of the, as I said earlier, especially the the the, uh, the NDC, we talk about uh, carbon reduction. One of the key areas is the waste. And uh, so that's, uh, where it's a direct uh, link because SCP talk about waste minimization, the whole waste waste management, the one area, but then there are other areas. Now, one of the key uh, issue I invite in the NDC, uh, the, the develop, uh, what you progress on uh, climate action. I said that earlier, the progress is not very uh, satisfactory uh, compared to the other, some of the other SDGs, uh, that uh, although we were able to have some uh, impact through uh, promotion of renewable energy as well as uh, uh, energy efficiency we have a lot of uh, new uh, technology with high energy efficiency but in general there's a failure in what you call lifestyle the the people's choice uh, and what you call rebound effect and so on which basically link to the lifestyle uh, we call this uh, the, uh, the, uh, the the third aspect basically uh, lifestyle change so we, without having a lifestyle change, what you call uh, that approach, or rather change in lifestyle, the, the mitigation of uh, carbon uh, become very difficult because we have this what you call rebound effect and other other implications. So therefore, uh, SCP talk about that aspect, which really link to indices. So therefore, when you improve SCP, 
there will be a direct impact on NDCs. So therefore, now presently in NDC, uh, in energy sector, for example, there's one statement saying that there's a demand side management. Uh, that's only it, what it state. How far, what's the area is not indicated there. But when you look at the SCP, there are many areas where we can highlight how can have an impact on demand side management. That's basically talk about lifestyle change, which is uh, one of the underlying principle, principle of SCP. So therefore, if we can integrate SCP to NDC, that particular item, for example, we can have more realistic uh, indicator and target uh, within the NDCs. So likewise, even in transport sector, for example, uh, we are talking about uh, shifting towards more efficient transport, public transport, and so on, moving to uh, non-motorized transport, and so on. Those are linked to basically lifestyle, uh, you know, life, uh, uh, life uh, thinking, you know, so that uh, lifestyle change. So, so therefore, these are very uh, linked to each other, NDCs and SCPs. speaking and please others also um, include your questions because we have only a very short time limit that's available. How much do we link the SDGs activities to Sendai framework work? Uh, do we consider this transfer processes through SDG indicators and uh, targets? Uh, I am not very familiar with this framework. Uh, can you uh, elaborate a bit more, uh, Yoshita? Um, brought in with the um, price agreement and SCG. So they have the same timeline and it focuses on disasters and um, addressing losses through natural disasters and hazards. Uh, so the disaster management ministry has been working on this. There's data collection that happens. Um, so what I'm looking at is how it could connect to data indicators and all. Do we have it included at the moment? Yeah, I think it's an important area. Now, when we uh, look at uh, the uh, SDGs uh, indicators and target, this is again a cross-cutting issue. Uh, for example, the, the impact on disasters on most of the economic activities and other even social dimensions, uh, even, even the quality of life. So uh, there's a direct linkage there. But then, uh, uh, while said that, the how far those aspects has been indicated into the SDGs, especially in uh, different sectors, uh, I think we have to look at it uh, uh, in detail. Like so, uh, and especially uh, when you look at the localization aspect, uh, the, the, sometimes we uh, have some national level indicators, but then not really looking at a specific area or sector or, or, or geography location uh, to localize those uh, targets and indicators. So therefore, this I think it's one area more emphasis or effort has to go. I know there are a lot of people who work on animals and um, food security who are on the call. So if you have very specific questions on this, please ask Dr. Sugadapala, because we have only about 10 minutes maximum uh, remaining. Um, in the meantime, um, just opening the conversation on that. Um, so uh, what I would like to check with you is, how does this work in other countries? Do you have any examples uh, of countries that have finalized localized indicators? Um, yeah. And how? Yeah. Yeah, um, some uh, sometimes the country, some uh, even region. I will look at the EU. Uh, uh, they have uh, gone far, you know, uh, like the, 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 the approach they have taken is basically uh, uh, they have given the, uh, they have tied with cities and the city governments are strongly engaged with this localization process. And then uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges and then, of course, the innovative uh, solution for that one came up with is local government. Local means basically city government, cities. And uh, in, in Sri Lanka, it's like a local authorities uh, or maybe municipal councils and so on. Now here, we don't see that type of a uh, contribution, but then what happened there, basically most of these national level, uh, you know, the interventions or the, the responses has, you know, decentralized. And then the, the, the city level, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, 
shared the they have good prices and so on so there are a lot of uh, you know uh, development in that line so most of these uh, challenges we talk about there are good examples uh, within certain uh, cities in the country how they have managed that one and secondly of course like china they have uh, adopted it uh, that document is also now available and 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 uh, they have uh, you know uh, the localized all of uh, these uh, global targets to local uh, agenda local uh, uh, values and then uh, japan and so on so i think there are many countries uh, they have a uh, progress they have a progression uh, more than us so there are enough uh, i think success stories where we can uh, look at it and then try to learn from them And um, one last question from me. Uh, so this is an ongoing process and um, a learning process for everyone involved, I think. Um, since there are a lot of things that are happening, like the NDC review um, and other things that align with the SDG indicator processes, uh, what would be your advice to multiple stakeholders who want to get involved? In what way uh, can they engage? Yeah, fundamentally, I say that it's a, it's a requirement. But as I said, again, uh, the way it's happening now, uh, it's not the way we, uh, the, you know, expected. So, so therefore, uh, there should be some information uh, to uh, correct that issue. That's basically linked to the uh, the the the, uh, the policy coherence, uh, lack of policy coherence, and also institutional framework and the gap between the central and local governments. Everything, I think, uh, is a. Uh, 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 affected on this uh, issue so uh, one of the another uh, challenge or what a negative point is that uh, sometimes we uh, do these actions with the target set by global you know a target basically like we have to submit by this date and so on and then of course we are getting funding from uh, you know international agency to carry out that so therefore uh, there's a set target uh, Sometimes, which is not very practical when you look at the amount of uh, the uh, expected consultation we had to do. Uh, but then, uh, because there's a target, uh, the deadline set by the, the funding agency, whatever, or maybe maybe even the international uh, treaties and so on, we try to hurry up. And then, uh, then this acceleration will affect the whole process. So in that context, uh, without localization and also uh, without getting the uh, the interaction or support from the the stakeholders we are not going to come up with a good uh, you know attainable uh, targets and indicators so therefore uh, uh, pressure should come into the authorities to uh, make sure that uh, the all the stakeholders are adequately consulted uh, now uh, it's more difficult, you know, than saying than by doing it. Uh, so probably uh, one opportunity would, for example, the policy uh, interventions. Basically, there'll be a, a public hearing. Basically, so so in that level, uh, there is opportunity for other different stakeholders to get involved. But uh, I'm worried that uh, that may be sometime too late uh, for us for others to get involved. So therefore, this involvement should come not before that the public consultation it should come before that so therefore uh, probably uh, uh, if the relevant uh, uh, stakeholders the uh, the the community based organization and others can get together and then request from the, uh, the the authorities for example sustainable council and then from the the, uh, the minister of environment that's going this is uh, make a request and then try to get an opportunity uh, to get involved uh, meanwhile, uh, while we are doing it, we can also have this type of like activity, like what we do here. And then uh, once we come up with some solid uh, kind of a recommendation through this, this discussion, uh, then we can submit it. So when they submit it, uh, then they will consider uh, at least. So, so therefore, uh, we should not wait till they come to us. Uh, we can uh, go ahead, uh, like what we do now, uh, and and we can plan more and more uh, this type of consultation or with this type of uh, Concern, getting feedback and follow up, and come up with some solid, uh, uh, some uh, you know manageable solid uh, recommendations for the authority to consider. Uh, it should be very concise uh, to the point, highlighting the gaps. I think we can do it. So therefore, if you can uh, do that, uh, initiate that type of activity, 
for both NDCs and SDGs, I think there's time for us to uh, give some input. I think to, to be specific. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So lifestyle change. Um, so basically, it's it's a very uh, you know we have consumeristic uh, consumeristic society. Uh, very difficult to go away from this one. But then there are people who does that who do that, and uh, and uh, so uh, we can look at them also. I think individually. Uh, we have tried ourselves like uh, we should not wait till the society changes it might not happen but then in your changes the society can change too so uh, good practices also can you know uh, grow so uh, i think we have to uh, set by our own uh, you know examples so uh, uh, there are examples where like i know certain people but then these are not written anywhere like you know they just uh, Keep them to them to self themselves. Um, so therefore, we have to have a way of identifying those success stories or people, and give them more chances to speak to the uh, the society. Uh, that's where the, the the media and others should come in. Um, um, so uh, I think it's possible. It's it's, it's required when you look at the present. Uh, you know. The culture and the uh, the, the lifestyles uh, it's uns unsustainable we have to move towards that and even the education system is not geared to that and very recently uh, with this sd sustainable consumption and production uh, uh, policy development we have uh, also developed uh, education for sustainable consumption and production national uh, plan uh, which covered all the uh, levels of education from early childhood education to adulthood, uh, basically primary school, secondary school, university, tertiary, uh, vocational, and so on. And then uh, we develop a detailed curricula uh, for university education to come up with a single one subject, one credit subject, where all the courses uh, should have the subject as a mandatory requirement for the degree. So this has been communicated to, to, uh, to the uh, UGC also. It has not uh, formalized yet. But then uh, what I mean is we have to now educate our younger generation towards that. So education is very important aspect. That should come not even in uh, Montessori. It should even uh, start from, from the birth. So therefore, if, from father to mother, th those are the first uh, teachers for the human being. They should also get involved in that one. So therefore, this uh, education for sustainable development or education for sustainable consumption and production should come in a stronger way to educate the younger generation so that they can uh, show uh, for the elders, elder people, uh, for their parents or others, uh, how uh, uh, lifestyle can uh, you know uh, make the difference? Uh. Uh, the localizing SDGs. Uh, I don't think it's uh, really uh, progress well yet. Hmm? Still, uh, what happened is now this act came in 2017 and it required the policy to be in place in 2018. So that 2019 and maybe last two years, we could have started some basic activities such that by at least 2020, we can start something. But then still, we have not finalized the, uh, uh, the, uh, the policy and mainstreaming of SDGs to the institutional system, the government, uh, the, the central government, the ministries, the agencies, uh, then the local government and others uh, just happening now, just started. So therefore, it's a long way uh, for that, because especially localizing, we need involvement of uh, not the central government agencies. They are also important, but they have to do the coordination part. But then uh, local governments, points are set up, lo uh, local authorities, and then all the other stakeholders. Uh, should come in there, but there is no uh, yet a forum to do that uh, unless we have this type of a you know kind of a webinar or some discussion. You know, so there is no formal process yet in place. So therefore, I think uh, we are really struggling the localizing of SDGs uh, because uh, some institutions are still waiting for the government to come up with the policy because they have a, another policy which are not in align with this one. So because we have many policies, 
unless we have come up with a overarching policy which supersedes others, they are not going to take any action. So, uh, so therefore, uh, they are reluctant to uh, make a change. It's a, it's a, it's a, by nature as well as by, by uh, legislation. So, unless we change this one, uh, for which I think we require this policy to uh, be in place. Uh, so, therefore, still we are struggling to make the governance or the, 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 the legal framework for others to have other things to happen. So, so therefore, uh, the, the, uh, we can't be satisfied with the progress so far localizing. Of course, there are many other areas like the lack of data is a key aspect. Uh, we don't recognize the importance of data. Uh, we don't have a means of collection of data. We don't have a reporting uh, mechanism and so on. So there are many other areas. As I said earlier, there are many uh, different challenges. Uh, this uh, knowledge in you know, a base and there are many other things. So, so therefore, there are many challenges for us to address uh, for effective localization. So therefore, we can't be satisfied with the present progress of localization. Uh, in, in local countries or in Sri Lanka. Um, so this, I'll take Tilang's question as the final one. Um, he's asking about language barriers in localizing the process. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, yeah, it's a key issue. Uh, not only localization, many uh, knowledge-based activities, the language issue. Uh, so I think we have to uh, look at the local languages. It's also a part of the SDGs, basically. And most of this, uh, uh, communication we had to do in local languages. Otherwise, uh, even in uh, urban sector, most of the community will not. They might know the English, but then don't, they don't understand the meaning of this certain, certain uh, you know, uh, uh, the words and other you know, thing uh, uh, because of the language. So therefore, language is a key barrier. So therefore, we should be able to prepare first the material. Uh, they make available the, in local languages and make available there yeah, and and most of the cases we need uh, like when you do a because now for example i can't speak tamil but no but i know an uh, important so therefore if someone here you know translate this one through local languages that could have been much better thing so that uh, people will understand more even we sometimes know the english uh, uh, knowing local language make a big difference they will feel ownership also that's that's one thing like when we like uh, we uh, we did that type of thing in uh, when i was in sasa major authority because we have a division on what we call the the knowledge management division so i was traveling all over the country we had a special program for local authorities so they are always we take uh, uh, we like uh, single i can do but then always i carry uh, someone who can translate to tamil when you go for uh, uh, for uh, north or other areas so so that's become very important thing and in the, even in the discussion, mm -hmm. we allow them to discuss in the local languages. Otherwise, uh, the real knowledge will not come out. So therefore, uh, I think we have to understand, we have to I think uh, highlight the importance of the English. But then all these uh, interventions, we have to look at uh, the, the translations, the, the carry out in local languages is a very important aspect. So therefore, in localization process, I think it's mandatory. So therefore, we have to have some mechanism where all these uh, documents we prepare uh, tra is translated in a correct way. Uh, to uh, local languages. So there's another yeah. question basically looking at the governments and rural communities. Yeah, that, that's as part of the, 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 the solution basically. All has to be part of the solution because otherwise they won't feel the uh, ownership. And also, uh, otherwise, we don't understand their problem too. So when we uh, sit in a target, we have to understand uh, what the real issue is. So, real issue is with them, not us. So, therefore, uh, uh, unless they are get engaged, uh, we will not understand the real issue. Therefore, we are not will not come up with the uh, real target and uh, real solution. So that will be a very uh, damaging because we are going to spend resources uh, mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, uh, not relevant area. Mm -hmm. so, so therefore, uh, we have to look at uh, this aspect. So yeah, India, they have a very strong uh, administrative structure. For example, when you have, a, for example, uh, secretary of uh, ministry, uh, it's about the minister. Minister never control, can't control the secretary so because they are very powerful. So so that that has made uh, one difference uh, compared with other regional countries. Secondly, uh, their culture itself, they are proud of being an Indian. 
so we feel it and and so so their lifestyle uh, sometimes we think that these are poor and so on but when you go into their uh, shoes and we look at their way of life uh, the ha- we can see the happiness uh, from outside we see that these are, they are poor and they have the poverty and so on but then you look at really their their lifestyle uh they happy so uh, so therefore i think india have been so many different cultures languages uh the way they are progressing uh, is quite uh, you know should be encouraged you know appreciated so uh, so they have uh, for example uh, they have for clean energy uh, they have massive uh, targets in renewables uh with so many in you know, a criticism uh, from other part of the world but they the government is uh, pushing that very hard and we can see the success now so uh, uh, but of course uh, they have uh, strengths basically number of people is a strength and also they have a high market and so on large market and so on so their industry can survive and so on there are many advantages but then of course uh, they have a lot of uh, challenges too i think they are doing well uh, but of course uh, they are maybe uh, gd per capita and other maybe uh, not that uh, up to the level of expectation so there are a lot of challenges uh, but then uh, when you look, look at uh, those challenges uh, we have to appreciate the, the progress of india so we got a few um, colleagues from india who are on the call um, right. um i think alok was the one who asked that question so maybe you have your own opinion you can uh, type us if you want to share some information on what's happening in terms of sdg process in india so that others could get some information as well um we have about one or two minutes so i'll let alok type uh, her input uh, if there she wants to add something um and also to um uh, take up what you mentioned about how participation could happen um in terms of sdgs and also ndcs i think it was a good point you raised up to the pal on how um multiple stakeholders could engage uh by doing their own activities and that could connect to the national uh, or central processes that are there so for example um if there are certain sectors we want to focus on and identify the key elements uh, there's always the opportunity to provide technical support technical expertise as well as communication of these to create awareness among the public that can happen so that the public opinion would be heard in terms of what happens on sdg sustainable development and climate action um yes um so alok is still typing uh, we'll give a minute unless anyone else has a quick addition um i think we'll close it in one minute one alok alok statement is up um remarks um, in one minute uh dr sugdepal anything we missed yeah, out sure. uh, i am i'm more interested in the follow up activities uh, oshita so we'll uh, not should not stop here so with the uh, input from the participants uh, we can look at how we can go forward multiple calls uh, webinars that we are having on different themes so we could um have thematic discussions around the indicators so for example if it's food security what would be the indicators what would be the changes that need to be incorporated what's missing or um how to connect with different processes that are there um and then we can prepare like the knowledge product out of it which we could submit as a collective effort of all who contributed to this um in person or online um and then we can share it and you could maybe take them into consideration also and alok has said something dennis if you don't mind um, if you could transfer it to the screen uh, okay um so she says very little information is available on the stg conversation um there is not a lot of messaging okay and this, yeah okay so i guess it's about um how we need information on the processes that are happening in the country um and also the the role of other stakeholders apart from the government uh, so if we we can if we can build the awareness on these issues then there'll be more engagement and request to access to information i guess uh, which would be available in countries uh local level so that a lot of people can engage in the processes 
Yes. Um, so I'll pass the pa uh, last words to Dr. Sugadapal if you want to write something, and then we can close. Yeah, thank you. I think it's uh, thank you, uh, Yoshita, giving me opportunity to, to uh, do this one. And um, I think, uh, as I said, there's a long way to go. Uh, only way we can uh, tackle the situation is by uh, active engagement, uh, work together. And uh, probably we start with some little, little thing. Uh, we don't have to go for every complex thing, but select some specific area. But uh, within that area, we'll have complexity, of course. Uh, so when you have some best practice on place, uh, quickly others can follow, like other will follow. So therefore, uh, we had to uh, now come up with something on the ground to show that how can really uh, have progression in SDGs in a particular selected uh, locality or uh, sector. So when when he, uh, you know show that uh, type of a progress, then even the government will uh, quickly come into picture. I think so. Therefore, we need some success stories. So we can start from here uh, and have more uh, knowledge sharing sessions and so on. Share the experience, and then concentrate on uh, one or two areas uh, where we can all uh, work together and show something uh, to the country. So so with that, uh, I will uh, close for the day. So if you have any questions, anything you can uh, you can contact me. Uh, my contacts in the is in the university web page. So we can, uh, if you have any other information or any any comments, you can uh, contact me through the through uh, uh, Washita too. And thank you again. A good day. You can trust the email address as well, so that uh, everyone can engage with you. Thank you, everyone, who joined us today. And we look forward to engaging with you in the coming weeks. Um, bye for now. Um, thank you, everyone.